Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. We are live and there will also be a recording of this. So for those of you who are joining us live, thank you so much for being with us and please be sure to comment. I love reading everything that everybody writes and just know that if you get a lot out of the show, subscribe for more amazing conversations and also send it to a friend, you know, will really like the conversation or needs to hear it. A little bit later on in the show today, I'm going to be featuring Susanna Kennedy with a Z, Susanna. (laughs) She's the creator of Reality Crafting 5.0. This show, Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, has won the COV Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named it one of the best 20 podcasts to listen to this year. It's a high-ranking self-improvement podcast on Apple Podcasts, nominated for two people's choice podcast awards and for a Webby award. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and access consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. You can find out more at Dr. Dane, D A I N here, H E E R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a book writing coach and I help specifically spiritual messengers who are ready to take the idea of their book to finished, published, and a really good, fine book at that. You can join our ongoing twice monthly Zooms, and I can coach you to write your book. Also, I've got a company that takes authors' books to a guaranteed international bestseller status, and I do all the heavy lifting. And finally, I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. So if you would like to become your own publicist, I'm about to roll out a webinar. Go ahead and sign up at debbiedashinger.com slash gift so that you can be alerted to this free webinar where I'm going to be giving away the 411 on how you as a light worker can be interviewed and get tons of people, your the, their eyes, their hearts to your business so you can start working with them and helping them because that's why you're here. Go to debbiedashinger.com. It's D-E-B-B-I d-a-c-h-i-n-g-e-r dot com slash gift. Sign up so you can participate in the webinar. As I said, my guest today is Susanna Kennedy. She helps dynamic, awakening people activate their superpowers, fulfill their soul purpose, and stop working so hard. In 1997, she experienced a spontaneous quantum consciousness awakening. Susanna today is an expert on the planetary and personal accelerated evolution. A powerful change agent and visionary, she facilitates enlightenment for individuals and groups. Susanna is the author of the book, Sacred Union, Pathway to Paradise. Her divine human upgrade program guides clients to expand to higher levels of consciousness, and her clients report dramatic shifts in their quality of life within days of beginning their divine human upgrades. If you would like more, go to her website, SusannaKennedy.com. And remember, it's S U Z. A N N A Kennedy.com. And I welcome Susanna to Dare to Dream. Great to have you. Aloha, Debbie. Thank you for inviting me. Aloha, because you are in, in Hawaii, yes? I am in Hawaii, my my personal paradise here. Which island are you in? So I can come uh, visit. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh Kauai. Oh, wow. Very green, I understand. Very green, very lush, very beautiful. Very feminine. Mm. How did you land there? Where were you before? Well, I grew up in a suburb of Detroit. And uh, after I had my awakening in 97, I moved for two years to Sedona, Arizona, and then got the guidance to, to move here. So I've been here 22 years now. Amazing and cool that you actually listen to your guidance. (laughs) Not everybody does. So let me ask you this. You offer this. I like this. It's not just solution, but solution. So soul, right? So the solution to why so many successful people are stressed out, feeling empty, 
and failing to fulfill their soul purpose. That's a tall order. So talk about that. Uh, talk about that offer and how it is, you know, like who comes to you and how is it that you facilitate them? Yeah, well, I find um, a lot of uh, women that come to me um, have had a similar path that I had, which was I was in the corporate world. Um, I was the auto with, industry, right? The auto Ours? industry. Yeah, as a consultant, I designed uh, training programs and performance solutions. So um, I was doing very well, and um, but I was feeling like you know, is this really what God put me on earth for, you know, is to, you know, teach guys how to run their car dealership. And it's, it's like, I just didn't feel like that was it. And I kept asking, you know, what is, what is my purpose? And the answer came to me in the form of this spontaneous <laughs> awakening. Um, Hindus call it the Kundalini awakening. It was mm -hmm. spontaneous. And uh, when that happened, uh, all these other abilities came online. And I could see that I was not who I thought I was, that I could see, and because I had done a lot of computer training, <laughs> I was seeing this computer program in my DNA that was my, my sense of self, my ego, and that that wasn't who I really was. And I could feel the vastness of love and light that I am and that everybody is. I mean, we are all that. So that, uh, but even so, I knew that if I didn't get that programming out of my cells, I wasn't going to be able to do what I came here to do. Mm -hmm. And I became very mission oriented. And then it turned out that my mission was to help other people go through this transformation process from, you know, only human to divine human. And since I had that experience in the corporate world of designing training and performance solutions, you know, it was always about changing the performance, changing the behavior. You know, I could take what I had mastered in, in that world and applied it to the information that was coming down um, from my higher self that I had, you know, actually integrated and then, you know, applying those skills to create a transformational process. Interesting. So you have this spontaneous quantum consciousness or Kundalini awakening in 1997, and then you birth this reality crafting incorporated. So what is the technology that came through you to impart to other people and share? Yeah, well, um, it starts with really embodying your I am presence, which is you as you first emerged from source. And so that is the most you know, loving, the most, um, the highest frequency and the most creatively powerful part of yourself. And when you embody that and bring that in, then anything that you command from that point has to be obeyed because that is the creation authority in your life. So, so then, you know, from that point, then uh, I went to, okay, if that's a computer program, <laughs> my ego is a computer program, then how do I upgrade that computer program? How do I, so I just, um, then it becomes understanding frequencies, that everything is frequency, everything is energy, and everything, every thought, every emotion, anything that's in physical form, even any organization has a form, all very unique frequencies that you can call forward. And um, what I do, I don't, I'm very careful not to scare the ego. <laughs> Oh, what because, do you mean by that? That's interesting. Don't scare the well, ego. Well, because, yeah, the ego is programmed 
to resist change. It believes its, its job is to keep you the same. So it, when you know, big change, big transformation is offered, the ego puts up a self-defense, you know, and that could be talking you out of it. It could be creating something in your life that distracts you, you know, all these different ways to, to distract you from making that big change. So, you know, to the ego, we're saying we're, we appreciate everything that you've done and you deserve an upgrade. <laughs> we're going to give you a promotion. I and love so that. that. So you, it's like, hey, ego, you're awesome the way you are. Look, it's like how we should speak to one another anyway, right? right? And thank you for creating all you've created or protecting me against all you've protected me. And guess what? You've done such a good job. You're going to get a raise. <laughs> right, exactly. So yeah, so then the um, I created the Emotional Mental Detox Program. So that's that's the first step. Well, actually, the first step is the triple flame, but I'll, I'll talk about that too. The, um, is, it, it goes um, in layers of frequency. <laughs> so um, we're clearing out, we're calling up frequencies like the first one is around male issues. So all of your misinformation, all of your beliefs, all about your, all your hurt and everything, that has to do with male energy, you know, we call that forward and then, and we put it in a chem, uh, alchemical container. So it's contained because you're calling it up from deep, deep, you know, memory from past lives from everywhere. It's very integrated. I make sure that I get all the dimensions because <laughs> we're not just this body, we're so much more. So um, yeah, bringing it all together into a container and then transforming that with infinite love, which is, uh, it's, it takes it to zero point. So it takes it to no form. So it doesn't exist as that anymore. And then you have a container full of infinite love, which is at zero point. It's also creative energy waiting to be told how to take form. So it's your creational energy as well. So then you bring in your intentional, your conscious intentional commands. And so I, I refined it over the years and now it's, uh, you know, it, it's a digital program that you can do on your own or do with me in coaching, but it's, it goes step by step. You know, one week we're working on the male issues, then the female issues then uh, fear and anxiety and panic and worry and terror and all of that. And then pain, sorrow, grief, um, sadness, those frequencies, because those are all in a frequency bandwidth. And so you can work with them all at once. Hmm. And then uh, judgment, guilt, shame, and blame. And then lack, limitation, and separation. So at the core of our, um, the core issue, the core misinformation, the core false program is that we're separate from source, from each other. Our mind is separate from our body. Our, you know, our emotions are separate from our mental. Everything is, we we've taken on this belief about separation and that's at the core of it. So in going through it layer by layer, like layers of an onion, it, it makes the whole process much more graceful, you know, so that you don't have big, um, oh, like with some things you have like a, a healing crisis. So it, that takes it away. It makes it more um, graceful, step mm. by step. You feel like you're in control mm. and you're guided and supported as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. I um, I was just thinking as you were saying that, Susanna, it's really interesting paradox. You know, 
I mean, I don't know what the age group is exactly, but definitely 20 and 30 somethings for sure have a very different experience because I know a lot of younger people. So they have a really different um, experience with time than I think folks who are 40s, 50s and above. I notice people who are 40s and above have a lot of time management issues and mostly younger people have this different relationship. A lot of them live remotely. They travel the world. They, they're not making a lot of the mistakes older people did, meaning older people would say, oh, I have to work till the end and get retirement. And, you know, then I'll go do something fun. And all those paradigms are broken anyway. They don't even exist. And, and these kids came in. I mean, I really love them. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're beautiful the way they navigate life. And so folks who are still living in that paradigm, which is a difficult one. Oh, I can't, I'm busy. Oh, I, you know, I have so many conflicts, right? <laughs> Um, and they're juggling time, job, family, self-improvement, personal development, spiritual growth, and everything, you know, exercise, everything in between. Um, how can they learn to manage this? And in fact, because you talked about zero point, the no thing, how can they take it back to that space of that where there is no existence of that and create instead what they prefer? Right. Well, um, clearing the subconscious programming helps with that and, and clearing the emotional attachment to the memories in the past. So it's like you get that clear and what you find is that a lot of the busyness is, is unnecessary mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have a lot more time and your mind is clear. So you're more productive, okay? And then, you know, looking at this, these younger people, they had parents that were busy, busy, busy. They didn't, they don't like that. So when yeah. they raised their children, they raised them differently. So they it'll be so interesting to see how their children react. Right. What new choices they will make based on what they experience. Right. But I think, you know, all as these, generations are born they come in with um i would say they're coming in with more of a resistance to program mm. Mm. cool mm. yeah so they're they're not they're not taking taking it in as much and i think these the really young ones that are being born they're like no way you're going to program them <laughs> Yeah, which I think we really need. I really yeah. do. Um, yeah, I felt really, I, I've been noticing some changes in myself around this subject and um, it's just been organic, but I'm doing a lot of work anyway. I'm in shaman school and every time I give somebody a session or I exchange sessions, I can see things are changing in me rapidly. And I uh, got a call today. It was actually a really important call, but it was an unplanned call from an institution wanting to answer some questions, like really important questions that I had about um, a big shift coming up. And I literally in real time just said, and I wouldn't have done this before. I would have fully taken the call and put everything aside, but I can feel um, I have a lot of constraints right now. I've got a parent in a hospital and there's stuff, right? And just beautiful life stuff. And in the moment I was able to say, you know, um, I can't do that right now, but I'd be really happy to set this up at a convenient time for both of us next week. And I loved that feeling in that moment. There was a part of me going, yay, you know, yay. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for taking a breath and checking inside and knowing this actually wasn't optimal. And I probably couldn't have heard him, you know, in anything he shared. So I felt really um, so positive about that. And it reminds me, Susanna, when somebody once um, said this, and I always thought, oh, that's so cool. When somebody said, when somebody asks you to do something that you, it is fully acceptable to say, hmm, I'm not sure. Let me sleep on that. I'll get back to you. But thanks for asking. You know, it's like, ooh, take all the space you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, it sounds like you have successfully cleared the fear of abandonment that we all come in with, because that is usually underneath why we say yes to things that we really don't want to say yes to. That's so interesting you say that, because that was my core wound. Yeah. 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 So the fact that you, thank you for, thank you, because that's huge. And I am definitely, there's been a lot of repairing happening and not even um, consciously on that subject, but on so much that is energetic, that the layers, you know, are shifting. Right. Yeah. When you don't fear abandonment anymore, it's a lot easier to start um, creating healthy boundaries for yourself. Mm, Hear that everybody. That's so neat. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to talk to you also about the divine feminine. I feel like the divine feminine is such a core subject right now. It is d- delicious. And I w- would love to find out what kind of wisdom can you share about the divine feminine? Um, well, you know, what comes up is I just um, had an experience, you know, kind of an inner journey and I was looking for, um, I, I could tell within myself, I had this programming that was really strong in what is beautiful and what is ugly. And I went, I asked to see what is the um, source of this? What is the first seed of this? And I went all the way back to the creation story and Lilith and how she felt rejected by God, and yet she was still a goddess, a creator, creatress, and so she created all these children that had unique expressions of ugly, and so we loved them all up (laughs) and um, brought a healing to that, but I, I, I think that um, healing that wound for women is really, really important to help us to accept, you know, and unconditionally love ourselves because that is where our power comes from. And we've lived in this reality that was uh, male dominant and, uh, and it, You know, a woman can be successful in the male dominated world. I was, a lot of women in corporate are. And um, and yet that doesn't feel good to us or something off. So being able to bring that into balance within ourselves is, is so powerful. And then you're, you know, you've got your inner male and your inner female. Uh, in the divine human upgrades, bringing the divine feminine and the divine masculine and bringing them together in sacred union. And then you're very, very powerful because it's all within you. And um, yeah, I just love that we're coming into balance with that. And even for those in male bodies, you know, balancing that within themselves so that they have access to intuition and creativity and their emotions. And yet the masculine part is, is much more uh, focused and orderly. And, you know, the two together are, it's just so beautiful. And but the balance has to come back. And, and that is uh, what women are feeling what they're what they're striving for and the energies that are coming in now are so supportive of that so it's exciting so what you mentioned that you just took a journey and then you talked about you know healing the ugly we'll call it and uh and i i would imagine healing the ugly in the divine feminine takes you know, there's many ways of feeling ugly. I mean, you can feel physically ugly. You can feel emotionally ugly, right? Like 
you're really out of alignment with, or you behave in ways that are awkward or uncomfortable, or uh, you've disowned parts of yourself or yeah, your behavior is off, whatever. Um, But how, what was your journey like with this? How did you heal it? And what was it like, if you don't mind sharing to start with? Well, I did um, kind of what I do in my reality crafting sessions is, um, you know, I go, I call in my I am presence, or I I acknowledge it because I've embodied it. Um, And I could see and feel um, Lilith and her pain, Mm -hmm. and all of her children, and their pain, and put them in that sphere of compassion (laughs) and just sent them infinite love. And then I saw um, Eve and Lilith integrating and, you know, coming into integration and wholeness. Thereby giving yourself compassion and seeing yourself come into wholeness, correct? Right, right. Right. Beautiful. For for right now, we're in this amazing time of ascension. I know I feel it. So can you talk about the physical or the emotional experiences that people are having regarding ascension? If there's light body symptoms, anything they're in? Yeah, I think that um, what people are experiencing now is um, definitely the physical symptoms because we have really high frequencies coming in and we have the unity frequency coming in. So anything that isn't unity is gonna come up for release. And I think that's what we're seeing, you know, when we see so much duality and polarization and separation being played out it's it's coming to the surface to be healed and integrated so it is coming out in physical ways because if if you've got beliefs or patterns or programs or emotional energy in your field that hasn't been transmuted into love when these higher frequencies come they're going to be you know activated and um so some some of it is something that's coming up maybe your worst fear is being played out in in a dramatization for you so that you you can address it so but you can preempt that by going (laughs) <laughs> going uh, into it ahead of time to and and very consciously following a process to to clear that before it comes up. So there's the physical things. I think on a planetary level, what people are fearing is they know they know everything's changing. They don't know what it's changing into, and we've been programmed to fear the unknown. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, and yeah, it's, it's just activating people's fears and they're acting that out in all kinds of different ways. So bringing, uh, helping people to uh, release the fear of the unknown and you do that first, and then you bring in the frequencies of peace. And then you can get to that place because it'll automatically raise your vibration and expand your consciousness. And then you can start to connect with memories that you have as a being who's already lived in a fifth dimensional reality. Because our minds can't imagine what that is like, but we have memories of that that we can pull in then if we have made the room for them and start to feel what it feels like to, to be in that kind of a reality. 
And so for creation, for reality crafting, feel even if you don't know what it looks like or how, if you can feel it, then the universe will draw to you, um, take, bring that into form. Can you talk about that a little bit more? If you can feel it, um, it, it will assist you for the reality crafting. Can you talk us through, like give us an example maybe of one of your clients and mm -hmm. how you use this? Okay, so um, okay, let's say uh, somebody wants uh, to have a better relationship with their husband. Uh, and you know, they already recognize that they have patterns, relationship patterns that aren't really healthy, and now it's playing out with this husband. Okay, so I would bring them into their I am presence. Um, we would create a sphere uh, that's going to be the hologram for the new reality. And then um, describe what it feels like to be in that relationship in the best possible way. Okay, and then we kind of put that aside for a moment, create another sphere, and I'm giving away my secrets here. <laughs> um, and into that sphere, all the resistance. So, and you can just, because it's frequencies, you call it up, anything that's in resistance to this creation is gonna, you're gonna breathe it into this sphere, and then you um, send it infinite love, and it transmutes it into zero point and now it's creation energy so you put that with the reality you created put them together oh wait wait can you back up Thank one second i was with you but i just got lost at that last part so i totally understand you create a second sphere all your resistances whatever the issues are you blow it in and then just talk me through the transmutation piece and then how does that connect with the first bubble Okay, so the transmutation is sending in infinite love. It's a very specific frequency. The resistance that you've breathed into the sphere is uh, vibrating at a lower frequency. So that's your patterns, your, your past hurts and pains and your beliefs and all of that <clears throat> vibrates slower. Send in infinite love and you just focus it, hold it, and everything else has to speed up until it matches it. And then it's all infinite love, zero point, no, no form. And now it's creative energy. It's a sphere full of creative energy. And you, you merge with the sphere that you created uh, what you wanted, you know, that that ideal feeling of being with the husband and having that beautiful sacred union relationship. So you've already created that. And now you put them together and the infinite love is the fuel for the intention. So on one hand, you have, you've set the intention and that could be seen as the divine masculine part of it. And then the divine feminine is the infinite love. That's the creative energy. That's the fuel. You put them together and it fuels the creation. Then you anchor it into the physical world so that it will manifest. And, and it does, you know, the, um, we've done this with a lot of women in my sessions and, you know, the, the husband will suddenly listen better maybe or maybe there's a lot of stuff that she's doing where he's triggering something from her past. Her, now her triggers are gone and she listens to him. And, you know, and when you're in relationship with people and you make this change, they're going to have to adjust to you. Okay, so if it's possible, if they're in that same frequency bandwidth, then they're going to adjust to you. So it's good if you're doing this work to let your partner know 
that you're you're doing this and, and your you know your intention is to improve your relationship, improve myself in relationship. And so I might change and you know, because you'll break the programs. Every relationship is a program. So it's a you you clear the program and now you you have a new creative space where the you can you know consciously create the relationship without the old stuff without the the triggering this thank you i have a question about that and i it's like hmm, beautiful beautiful value right there i have a practice i've just done you know i got so fascinated with the idea of zero point and quantum and all of that. So when I go to sleep at night, Susanna, literally right after I close my eyes, I picture black, nothing. And I'm my being, my energy is in that black. And I start in that no thing to imagine. And I'm not a big visualizer, by the way. So it's more, it's like feelings or desires more than anything, but I will put them out there and various different things in my life that of creation. And at some point I actually fall asleep. So I don't know where I'm at at that evening in whatever I was putting in there. And I really like this idea that you talked about the sphere, the second sphere where you're blowing just all your bullshit into it. Everything that is stopping you, sabotaging you, resisting, you know, beliefs, experiences, like I can't never, whatever to do that. And I totally understand now what you're saying about when you imbue it with love, you completely change the vibration. Like I, I could feel it as you were saying it. And now I understand why, if you have something like that, you can merge it. And even the sense you were saying, this is the intention, the masculine, this is, you know, the, the holding, the feminine, the soft, and you can put them together. And when you say to anchor it, anchor it in your reality, what does that mean? Literally, like after they merge, where do they go? <laughs> what do you see or how do you guide your clients through that piece? I actually have an anchoring command. Mm. So it's uh, anchor, lock, and seal, recalibrate, align, balance, and harmonize for graceful integration and full expression in the physical reality and all relevant dimensions. So be it and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that anchors it in. And so then what you have is you know you have the reality and i i see i love i love working with spheres you know because we're it's holographic and and you can take you know you your reality is a sphere and it's got all these smaller spheres in it and all these memory bubbles in it you know and you can just take one and work with it and then put it back and there's, you know, after you've changed it, and there's a ripple effect, and it goes through the rest of your reality to adjust. And since I give the command graceful integration, <laughs> it, it will gracefully change. You know, you, I, you know, I've worked with women who they want to get out of a relationship. You know, so you you create that reality where they're free from it and you know you're integrating with the reality that that he's still there right and you want that to be a graceful change so graceful integration so that that is throughout everything i do cuz i i feel like i i came here the mission is to lead people through this transformation in the most quickest, easiest, graceful way possible. What are the typical, besides the relationship, what are other typical things or patterns that people come to you to work on? Well, a lot of it has to do with, they've already recognized that, you know, like in their words, I'm my own worst enemy. So they're wanting to get a better relationship with their self or they're wanting to, um, 
you know, connect with the higher aspects of themselves um, a lot about wanting to do their sole purpose, a yeah. lot of that. And um, besides relationships, well, we've done things like um, created new job opportunities, created new homes to live in, mm. you know, um, health issues, uh, things with their kids. You know, a lot of women are worried about somewhere else in their life, you know, someone else in their life, and they're wanting to change that other person. Mm. <laughs> you can't necessarily change them, but you can change your relationship and how you feel about it. And when you create a reality where that other person is, um, you know, healthy and free and happy, you know, that gives the energy to that person in that way, or that you're, you're excited. What I like to do is celebrate that my, you know, nephew is, is happy and healthy and, and, you know, doing what he loves to do. And that will manifest over time. It's and it's, you know, it's a gift, but you can't really change them. You, you're changing your reality. You're changing how your perception of them is. And it's all holographic. It's all energy. So, you know, then that person can show up for you differently. Mm. When you were talking about how you love spheres and how you would take a particular sphere or guide your clients to take a particular sphere, I was thinking about how much these spheres, if you will, show up for people today in photos or, uh, the, you know, all these little beautiful bubbles that definitely some people say they're angels. Some people say they're from other planets. They're benevolent beings. I definitely believe that. And just the kind of constitution they have and how interesting that would be to be able to pick a bubble and, you know, and to work on with you. And then I, I'm thinking about, uh, Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. I've interviewed him many times. And once I was on the red carpet with him and I'm crazy about him, right? He steps into my sphere, my energetic sphere, and it's palpable who this man is. And I remember once asking him because I used to go to Agape and watch him on stage and go, how do you do that? You know, anyone who's a speaker, I like, I had such mad and uh, just admiration that he could pull. It seemed ostensibly from the ethers and just speak, 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 like this amazing inspiration and put all these thoughts together. And I asked him and he said, and you might love this. He said, it's as though there's, there's bubbles all around him. And he would literally pick a sphere pop. And that's what he would speak to. Cool. Like that is so <laughs> incredibly unique. And I've never forgotten that genius, that brilliance to even let go enough, allow the spheres to be there and present themselves and trust whatever's going to come up and say, today is me. Talk about me. This is what these people need to hear. And so with the work with you, it feels like, you know, people work with you could pick a sphere and say, what do I need to work on today? What is really germane to my life right now? And then off you go guiding them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the um, I'll usually ask them, you know, what, you know, pick one aspect of your life that you would like to upgrade, you know, and that's the sphere that we work with. Mm. So, and then you put it back into the bigger reality and there's that ripple. So everything else that needs to adjust to that new reality will adjust gracefully. Yeah. Yeah, this is a show about dreams. So for people who are watching or listening and they're saying, oh, I would like, I'd like to up my divine potential. I'd like to manifest this dream or that dream into reality. Here we are in this year in this very interesting ascension current time. What are some like beyond tips that you can convey to folks that they can start to use? 
Yeah, well, um, you know, recognizing that um, you're, if your programming is still 3D, the best that you're going to be able to do is manifest the best 3D. So if you, you know, want to go beyond that, you're going to want to clear that out and make space for those memories of, you know, new paradise earth or, or whatever. So I would say that's important. And um, yeah, to connect, because there are memories, everything is a memory. I mean, there's now moments, there's now, and everything else is a memory, future memories, past memories, other alternative universe memories so you can you can pull them out because everyone is going to have a very specific frequency mm -hmm. so and and it's easier for us to feel and do emotional mm -hmm. to what do you want it to feel like and so that would that's what i would say is what do you want it to feel like ground that in, feel it, and then allow the universe to, to bring it to you. And you can watch it unfold. It's usually pretty exciting. I got this huge aha while you were saying that. When you And I've never heard that before, Susanna. When you said you have past memories, okay, that makes sense. But future memories, I was like, ooh, that's very interesting concept. And I was thinking about everything else you were guiding us through earlier and thinking, oh, imagine imbuing that process at some point when you've conjoined the two spheres and you've anchored it in your life and et cetera. If you actually consider the future you who has already successfully created that. Right. <laughs> and if you use those memories to bring back with you into this as you said, whatever elusive now and create, because of course your, your destiny is sure your path is clear. You are going to end up there. It's already created. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll bring that to my client's attention. So it's, you know, we've created it. And so this already exists, this, you already exists. You can bring her in to your heart space and she can be your guide. And so when you have decisions to make, you can ask her, is this aligned with our creation? Yes or no, <laughs> you know? And so you can get that immediate feedback. And then I like to do it with the spheres. So say, you know, I, I've, I've created the reality. It's unfolding in our perception of linear time, although it's already created, but I'm walking through the timeline of it. And, you know, I have a, a choice, maybe an opportunity comes up or I have a choice to make. So I'll take each choice and put it in a bubble and bring one at a time and feel, is this aligned with, with my creation? Is this aligned, you know? And th then it's easy to make decisions because you can feel if it resonates or not. And earlier we talked about that there are many people who have issues with increasing their productivity. Are there new ways that you know of for having more, doing less, working less? How can we have that? Like, it's so funny. I want to say, how can we accomplish that? Or, okay, that's not good. How can we achieve that? Ooh, that's not good. That's all that doing energy, right? Yeah. So they're poor words, but how can we actually still not actually supersede our productivity and yet be chill, like work a lot less, Yeah, yeah. effort a lot well, less. Right. So part of it is clearing that um, fear of abandonment. Okay, and then you're more conscious about your boundaries. So you're going to create, you're going to, you're going to, it's, that's just going to give you more time because you become aware of all the stuff you're doing that isn't yours to do. Hmm. So that'll give you time and you'll have clear boundaries. So then you'll be able to feel. But when you, when you create an intention and you anchor in that reality, 
and you have that future you as a guide that you can ask and you can ask that future you you give give her permission to uh not only answer questions that you ask but to tell you you know <laughs> pipe up and tell you what you know what to do and or guide you okay so what i find is that and also through this process, you're going to have a balanced inner male and inner female. So the male part is the doer. The female is the receiving the energy. So when they're in sacred union, the inner male respects the feminine. And she's, and she's going to know the right timing for things. So when we, you know, we're taught to set a goal and figure out what the steps are and go step by step and put it on a schedule, but that's not necessarily how the energy in the universe is flowing. Hmm. So with something like that, you know, especially like say work or getting things done at home, trying to balance work home stuff is, you know, ask what is what is it, uh, what is aligned for me to do today? What is the task? So when I had my, um, this Kundalini awakening and I had a sense of who I was becoming, but it was so different from who I was now, it was overwhelming. And at first I just got paralyzed at, you know, how am I gonna get from here to there? So I asked just, Give me enough guidance and enough energy to do what I need to do today to move, keep on that timeline. And, and magically, the, you know, the guidance that you get tells you what to do in the right time so that when you do it, it works. It anchors. You're not spinning your reels trying to push you know, against the river. What, what faith that is. That's awesome. And what about anger? I think anger is a very passionate emotion. Is there a way for folks who are experiencing maybe a lot of anger to transform that anger into passion? If you could explain that and give some real world or real life uh, examples of that. Yeah, well, I just actually did a, a, a world service on that. And um, yeah, so anger and passion, they're both frequencies, energies that are very active. Um, the difference is when you're in anger, it's you, you, you're not, you don't have access to the rational mind, the logical mind. And usually, you're being triggered and that the seed of that trigger happened in the past. So mm -hmm. as soon as you're triggered, you're not here in the present anymore. You're in the past and you're reacting as you had then. So um, transmuting the anger, um, we also transmute the boundaries because anger is triggered when you perceive your boundaries have been violated. And, you know, that's an, another reason why so many people are angry right now. They're becoming aware of all the ways that our boundaries have been violated. So, um, and also the energy is, is pushing up the past boundary violations. So we clear the boundary violations, we clear the anger, and then you're clear. And, and you're in the present. And then if, then you can determine if whatever you're angry about is something you need to do something about. Is it, is it yours to do? So and are you saying, let me, let me see, get some clarity. So I do understand the part hundred percent about the trigger and something from our past and we're trying to protect ourselves so it doesn't happen again. And that's usually what a trigger is. And so we get a little lost in that in real time because it's dragging 
this past wound up. So you're suggesting that we go back and clear the original wound. Is that correct? So that in order we can be present. And then are you saying that in the present, that's where we take a new look at the anger we've been feeling? Mm -hmm. Well, we take, we take a look at the boundary issue that was violated. Okay that triggered us, you know, originally in this moment, or, or we look at the pattern of boundary violations, you know, what, what has been triggering us? Is it something for me to change? You know, is it personal that I need to maybe hold somebody accountable, mm. or I need to change something in my life? Or is it one of these bigger, you know, universal things that's happening? You know, is it my sole purpose to uh, try to design a new way that that is um, unity based and loved based? You know, am I part of this universal solution or is is this, you know, my personal thing? So you you get clarity. And if if it's something that you it could be that you're just triggered from the past and you clear that up and you're not angry anymore and that's all you have to do. Mm. But if it's if you're wanting to use that energy to act, to change things, then that's it's been transformed into passion. And so then you have more clarity about what it what is here for me to contribute to the new way. And, and, and that passion energy is motivating and action oriented. So you bring that passion into that guidance and then you can go forward. Mm -hmm. I used to do an exercise where I went inside and I would find, well, there would be an original creation I didn't prefer. And I would do this whole exercise. I didn't create it. Um, a man by the name of Harry Palmer did. It was so powerful. And I was able to, and the more I used it, the more powerful it became. I was able to go to the complete core of what had created this situation or belief and really take a look at it remorsefully. So because of what it had created in my life and I'm sure other people's lives and then discreate it. And of course, then you're in the no thing. And then into that space, I was able to put what I preferred and come back up. And of course, your life is completely different because what you're talking about when you're saying, go back, find the inception of the wound that created this anger trigger. That's exactly what you're doing. You're going back to this thing. I mean, this is something we do in uh, shamanism is soul retrieval, because in that moment, everything gets splintered, things feel very real from there on, and they're actually not. They're actually not. They're just a creation, a response they're, and a creation. They're memories. Mm -hmm. They're memories. So, um, yeah, and... You don't even have to know, say like you're, you're trying to heal from a, a trauma that you sense that you have, but you don't know what caused it. A lot of people have repressed trauma because when we have a trauma, when, when that thing happens, part of us is separated out into the fourth dimension and that, you know, part of us holds that memory and holds that pain so that we can still function. So, but you can call that forth and you don't necessarily have to go through the pain and the memory. You, just by intention, you call forward, what is the seed of this trauma? Mm. You know, let it come forward as a memory bubble and send in infinite love. And, you know, then it goes to zero point so that the memory, you don't have to have the memory and you don't have to feel it. And I know a lot of people, you know, teach it a different way, but I've, I've found that it's not necessary. I had a, once during an ayahuasca journey, um, gosh, it's so many years ago, but it's, 
I don't know, four, yeah, four years ago, I had a memory come up while I was on ayahuasca and I, it was so, I dissociated from it. Cause I was like, what? Um, and later on, I very, it's so interesting being on ay ayahuasca. I'm not suggesting it for everybody or anybody. It just has been my path. And while I was on it, I, I just mindfully redirected to that memory. And I thought, I think I need to explore this. And I had no idea. It was so overwhelming. I had no idea what to do with it. And I brought it to the shaman. There was many in this situation. These people were exquisite, uh, really angels. And, you know, I knew it. Now I know in hindsight, I literally don't know if this was a past life memory trauma. Because I, I still don't know that it's connected to this life, but I was anyway able to present it and in real time, literally express all of it. This person just held the most phenomenal space for me to release all of it. And there was a very, uh, it was a really strong emotional release around it. And what was so beautiful about being so raw in the moment and having somebody so amazing hold space for my being and that memory is that when it was all, when I was fully cried out and expressed out, I just started laughing. I had so much joy. <laughs> And, um, and then he was laughing and we were sitting there and I kept saying things that I found absurd and funny. And then we were just cracking up and he came to me the next day, you know, when we were, I was quite sober, we were both sober and said, I've never had an experience with somebody in a ceremony like that before. And that was amazing, you know, to take the entire almost heroin journey arc of that situation and, um, you know, thank you. And I was like, oh, please thank you too, because it was done in that moment. It was complete. I can talk about it with you, but it was, there was, I have nothing. There's zero attachment, zero energy on it, gone, complete. Still don't know this life, another life, another dimension, multi-dimension, who knows, but it's complete. And I just really honored the fact that it presented to say, I need to be healed. I'm coming up because I need, I need you to heal me. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I love that it uh, ended up in laughter. That's great. <laughs> yeah. One of the, um, in the divine human upgrade series, there's one of the sessions that's called integrate polarity. And in there, it's like, a it's like a massive soul retrieval because we call in all aspects of ourself like into this room and you see that you've been exploring all these different topics and you explore it from one way and another way and a third way and in this you know guided journey the, the ones that are explore, uh, exploring the same topic from different angles get together and they start talking to each other. And, and then the whole thing is that they, they integrate, they all share their wisdom and their knowledge and, and integrate into wholeness. And then you bring that, that back and it's, you know, that's what people have said. It's like a mass <laughs> soul retrieval. But you also get, you also get the, that, you know, what we've been told you, you've done everything. You've been the hero and the, the enemy. You've been the victim and the victimizer. You've done it all. And integrating those, the wisdom, you know, you can extract the wisdom from it and clear the trauma of it. And then it's just wisdom. Then it's just wisdom. Where can folks work with you? How can they find you? What can they find, Susanna? Okay. Well, I have um, my website is susannakennedy.com. And the first thing I would like um, everybody to do is to get the free meditation, which is the triple flame activation. So that's divine light, divine love, divine wisdom, those three frequencies. And I have you bring them through 
your meridian pathways and your, you know, your spinal column. So it's clearing, it's, it's um, neutralizing, it's loving up, you know, all the stuff. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's good to do anytime you're starting to feel like some, you know, you're starting to get a cold or something, you know, anytime you're starting to feel it just clears it and you get to more clarity and more peace. But it's, it's the first step in all of my programs because it clears the meridian pathways so that when we go to do the inner work, that the deep, you know, hidden stuff, that stuff is going to move through the meridian pathways on the way to your consciousness. So if you clear it first, it's, you're not, it's not going to trigger that trauma. It's just going to, all the stuff, all the energy is going to move through really quickly, really easily. So you don't have to experience what put that there in the first place. So it's a real productive way to, to before you do anything, is to do that. And it, it's, it's got so many benefits. So I would encourage people to get that. It's a free gift on my website. And then, um, you know, what I offer is the Emotional Mental Detox Program, followed by the Divine Human Upgrade Program, and then my uh, Reality Crafting Sessions, which is the one-on-one -on -one laser focused to what aspect of your life would you like to upgrade? And that's at SusannaKennedy.com, S-U-Z-A-N-N-A, Kennedy.com. And Susanna, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream, future goals and dreams? Uh, well, I'm um, dreaming about playing with more people. <laughs> so. Um, just, I'm here to serve. I'm on this mission and I, you know, just want to bring, bring this grace and graceful transformation to individuals and to the world. So, and I love doing um, world service where, you know, people that have cleared themselves and now we get together and we, we do things for, for the world. So I love doing that. Mm -hmm. I love reality crafting. It's my favorite thing to do. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for your wisdom. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Debbie. I end today's show with this quote from Christian D. Larson. Believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there is something inside you that is greater than any obstacle. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment and share. If you're listening to us on podcast and you want to watch us, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And also remember, if you'd like to attend how to be your own publicist, it's so powerful. It's not just about getting booked on radio and podcasts. It is absolutely about what do you do with that opportunity? Are you so wonderful you create results? Do you even know how? So this is the entire system. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. Next week on the show, Neil Young's older brother, Bob Young, will be here. The amazing Bob Young's new book is out, Mind Golf which is all about life and golf and the metaphysical connection between them. I'm looking forward to that conversation. So join us then too. Thank you so much for being on this journey with us. Always, always appreciated. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality.